By the end of the video, we will have a working health system for our player, so that whenever the enemy boops into our player we lose some health as we can see in this health bar, and then after we die, the scene resets and we can try again. Let's get started. To get started, we'll be adding a few new components. First, we're going to add a slider, which we'll name Health Bar. We'll position it in the top left corner, but first I'll change the X pivot to 0, the Y pivot to 1, click the positioning icon, hold Alt, and click the top left icon to move it up here. I'll make my screen a little bigger. Jonathan from the future here. One thing I forgot to do when originally setting up this next part of the video was adjust the scaling of the canvas. After adding the health bar, as soon as you go to the canvas over here, you're going to see there's this canvas scalar component, and by default it's going to be set to constant pixel size. What you need to do is click this button, set it to scale with screen size, and then set a reference resolution. I typically set this to 1920 by 1080 which is an HD screen resolution for most computer monitors. We're also going to leave the screen match mode to match width or height and change this match to 0.5. In terms of setting up the slider, the component itself is a little bit finicky, so I'm about to go through all the steps you need to do to get it to display properly. Feel free to slow the video down and just go over that step by step uh, to make sure that it looks correct. Let's continue. Here, we'll set the X position to maybe 25 and the Y position to maybe minus 25. Maybe minus 10, that looked a little too much. Well, I'll change the width to 100 and the height to about 40. And then I'll go here, I'll delete the handlebar area as we don't need that. I'll uncheck interactable on the slider. I'll open the fill area, set the fill to the target graphic. Then I'll click on the fill and I'll set the width to zero. I'll click on the scene view, double click on the fill area, and then on these little handles, by pressing T, I'll drag these over so they're at the extents. This way, if I adjust the slider's value, the graphic fills it up entirely. Next, I want to change the colors of these graphics, so I'll set the background to maybe a light green, and then I'll set the fill to perhaps a dark red. If the color looks a little faded, just click on the health bar and increase the color multiplier to 5. There we go. Within my scripts folder, I'll make a few new scripts. First, we'll make a player health script. Then, we'll make an HUD script for our HUD. And finally, we'll go ahead and make a game controller script. On the player, I'll attach the player health. I'll attach the HUD to the canvas. Then I'll make a new game object, which we'll call game controller, and I'll attach the game controller script to that. I'll also reset its position and manually position it to be roughly where our player is. And then I'll give it an icon so it stands out a little bit. We'll be spawning our player in from this point, so I can go ahead and turn the player into a prefab and then delete the local instance of him from the scene. At this point, I think I also want to clean up my scripts, so I'm going to make a few new folders. There we go, enemy, player, and other. And I'll just move my scripts in here accordingly to keep things a little bit more organized. In the game controller script, we'll go ahead and delete update, but we'll leave start. We're, we'll also add private void awake, which gets called before start does. This will become important momentarily. Next, we'll add a serialized field, private reference to our player prefab, and we'll also need to get a reference to a local player that we're going to spawn in. We can just name that private game object player. Under awake, we'll set player to be equal to instantiate, which will spawn in our player prefab. So we'll take that in as a first argument, then we'll give it its spawn position, which will be transform.position. This is related to the position that, of where our game controller will lie. And then we have to tell it for the third argument, quaterion.identity, which just tells it to spawn with a default rotation. Then we'll go up here and add the using system namespace. And next we'll declare a public static action passing through a game object in the greater than less than brackets. And we'll call this on player spawned. Now within the start method, we can call on player spawned dot invoke 
and then send through the local reference of our player, this one right here. We'll also put a question mark here, just in case nothing is listening on the other end. Next, we'll go over to our player health script, and we'll create a private integer for health, which we can assign in the inspector, but we'll give it a default value of 10 here. Then we'll create a public int, and we'll call this current health, and we'll use a get private set. And then we'll copy paste that line, go over here and rename this to max health. Now within start, well actually not within start, we want to initialize this within awake right after our player gets spawned in. We're going to say current health equals health and max health also equals health. Then we can go ahead and delete update. We won't need that here. Instead, we'll make a public void and we'll call this take damage. We'll also want to take in an int damage amount, or we can just call it damage. Here, we'll want to subtract our current health by the damage amount. Now we want to say, if current health is less than or equal to zero, well, in this case, we can just destroy our player. We can say destroy game object, and then we can destroy our player. Let's also declare another public static action here. Let's declare public static action on player take damage. And here we'll send through an integer and this integer will be our current health amount. We also need to make sure we're using the system namespace in order to use actions. Over here, whenever we take damage, we can call on player take damage dot invoke and then we can send through our current health amount. We'll also do a null check by putting a question mark over here. Next, we'll have to head on over to our enemy script and we'll have to make a private int damage here and we can assign that a default value of say three. In our hit player method, we'll say find object of type player health and then we can call take damage. Maybe we should rename this to damage player instead. Next, let's look at the HUD script, which is where we'll access our health bar. First, we'll add the using unity engine.ui namespace, which will give us access to the slider component. We'll name it health bar. Now, let's start making use of these actions. We'll delete start and update as we won't be needing those, and instead, we'll add private on enable, and we'll also add private on disable. Within on enable, we'll reference game controller dot on player spawned plus equals we'll make a method and we'll call it setup health bar. Then we can press control period to generate that method. Within on disable, we have to unsubscribe to this method. We can do that by replacing the plus sign with a minus sign. We'll also move this method up over here. And finally, I'll just rename this game object to player as that's what it is and delete this not implemented exception. We also are going to add the player health dot on player take damage to a method called update health bar. And then we'll press control period to generate it. And we'll go down to on disable and unsubscribe from that method. And then I'll just move update health bar over here as well. I did make one mistake over here. Within awake, we'll need to cut this line out and add it into start instead. So we'll go ahead and recreate that and then we'll call this over here. We'll also need to make a private reference to our player. So let's go ahead and just create a game object player and we can make that private. Now we can say player equals instantiate and over here we can send through our player in the on invoke. The reason we're doing it this way is because first we want to spawn in the player on awake and then within player health give these lines a chance to initialize. After they've initialized, only then do we want to send through the fully set up player using start. This is an important distinction because if you look at Unity's order of operations, you'll see that awake gets called first, then on enable, and then start after that. This means that we want to first spawn in our player, then set up our player, then add our listeners, and then finally send through our player so our listeners can make use of our player. Back within the HUD script, under setup health bar, we can write healthbar.value equals healthbar.max value. 
that will set the health bar equal to this number over here. We could also change the max value to 10, which is our player's health, but in this case, I think we'll just calculate the health bar's value mathematically. We'll also want to make a private int max health variable here, and then within the setup health bar method, we can say max health equals player dot get component player health, and then we can get the max health variable, which we created earlier. Finally, within update health bar, we can say health bar dot value equals, and I'm going to write the word float in brackets here, then current health divided by max health. This is called a cast, and the reason we're doing it here is because both current health and max health are integer values which do not contain decimal places. Because our health bar will be a number that ranges between 0 to 1, we need to essentially convert one of these values into a float variable which does use decimal places. Otherwise, the health bar would just empty instantly. Then finally, just for good value, we can say health bar dot value equals mathf dot clamp 01, and then we can write health bar dot value. This is just going to ensure that the health bar's value stays exactly between 0 and 1. Let's save and go back to Unity. We'll need to make sure that our health bar is hooked up to the canvas and that our game controller has a reference to the player prefab over here in the prefabs folder. Then we can go ahead and give this a test. Here comes our enemy. He boops our player once and we lose about 30% of our health. Now we're down to uh, three health, one health, and then we die. Great, that's working perfectly. Finally, let's make the game reset when our player dies. Within player health, we'll make a new public static action, and we'll call this one on player die, and we don't need to pass through any sort of information. But we'll go here under damage player, and when the health reaches zero, we'll say on player die dot invoke. That's all we have to do here. In the game controller, we'll set up an on enable and on disable, and then we'll call player health dot on player die plus equals a method we'll create called reset scene, and then we'll unsubscribe to this same method down here and on, on disable, and of course, then we'll have to generate the method. I've just moved that up here. Next, we're going to go to the top and add the using unity engine dot scene management namespace, and then within reset scene, we'll invoke a method called reset scene delay, and we'll do that after, say, two seconds, which is basically going to cause a short delay and then reset the scene for us. There we go. And here we can say scene manager dot load scene, then open parentheses and call scene manager dot get active scene, and then parentheses dot build index. This line of code might seem a little bit complex. But what it's going to do is look at our scene's build index, which we can access by going to File, Build Settings, and then looking at this list. If you don't see anything here, just press the Add Open Scene button, and that will add your game scene. In this case, it will access build index 0, but this number might be something different for you. Regardless, it will reload the scene we're currently on whatever that scene happens to be. One quick fix, you may have noticed that the camera no longer follows our player around. This is because, on our state-driven camera, once we started spawning our player in, our camera no longer has a follow-at target or an animated target. So let's fix this with a script. I'll make a new c -sharp script and call it set camera follow. I'll attach it to my Cinemachine state-driven camera. Within the script, I'll add the Cinemachine namespace and then I'll go down here and I'll create a new private Cinemachine state driven camera and I'll just call it vcam. Then I'll go ahead and delete start and update and replace that with on enable and on disable and use the on player spawned listener to call to a method called set follow. I rename the variable to player and now I'll say vcam.follow equals player.transform and vcam.animatedTarget equals player dot get component, and we want to get the animator. There we go. Back in Unity, we'll attach the state-driven camera to the vcam component, and then we'll hit play. 
and there we go, just like that, our cameras are once again working perfectly. In the next video, we'll be making our player flash red whenever he gets bumped into by the enemy, and of course this will not interrupt or mess up any of our existing animations. See you there. Mm -hmm.